Why, hello, everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California, and you are joining me in my mess. I decided to pick up the camera because I am literally working in the yard today. It's a beautiful sunny day. And let's talk about totes and buckets right now. This is a new color. This is fuchsia. We're going to get into color in a minute. I am buying Sterilite. You also have Rubbermaid and there's a few other brands. Now Sterilite, as you can see, are clearly marked as a five. Can you see that there? That is a five. That is the same plastic that the grocery stores, restaurants, food centers use for food. Even food that you're going to put in the microwave and warm up. They use a two and a five. That is safe to use. Can plastic break down? Of course plastic can break down. You know, the old talk on the water bottles. People were getting sick. You know why? Water bottles are generally one, because they were storing, I even know somebody close to me, that was storing cases of water in the trunks of their car, and they were using them when they needed it after they've been in their car for six months. And their cars are getting to 180 degrees in the trunk. You do not store plastic or any other chemical or anything in that heat that you want to grow in. These containers that I've been growing in in years, for years now, will never get to 180 degrees, 150, or even 120 in my yard. Generally, soil generally is cooler than the air, unless it's freezing. Now, soil is very stable. So if you're freezing and you're at 30 degrees, there's a good chance your soil might be at 50 degrees. Your plants, your pots, anything you're growing in it, you know, we'll keep it at a good moderate temperature, but you're not going to be at no 120 degrees. If you're buying Sterilite, I'll show you the case that I bought. I just bought another case the other day of the fuchsia pinks. They came in eight. They were less than six bucks a piece. They're going to smell when you open the box. No big deal. You open up a lot of things. It's going to have a smell. The smell I had talked about in the past is a very oily, rancid chemical smell and usually those are plastics that are coming from other countries they have no numbers and they're using plastic that's been recycled but who knows what was in the plastic before who knows what kind of chemicals car oils gasoline you don't know but when you see a two a five one or four that's okay you don't use a three because three usually means it is recycled material a lot of times from things that are not to be used for food products. I love our plastic. We live in a world of plastic. Incubators that are saving babies' lives or hatching chickens are made of plastic. So keep that in mind. We're fine with plastic. Now, today I wanted to talk about the colors. As you can see here, I've got red, I've got a scuba green, I've got teal, I've got stadium blue. It's just an old green one. That one I actually picked up at a thrift store. And now they've got this fuchsia pink. Well, I actually talked to Sterilite. And I begged them and pleaded for purple. And they said they don't have purple right now. They did take the time to contact me and call me on the phone and explain to me that a lot of colors are promotional colors. And that was interesting to find out. So some company might have come for that pink fuchsia, that specific color, and let's just use it ex as an example. They needed 10,000, I don't know, but let's just say, so when they make up the totes, they're not just gonna go make 10,000, they may make 15,000, who knows, or whatever. And then they end up with these extra colors, and once they sell out the colors, they don't have them anymore, unless somebody else comes in and wants them again. Some of them are seasonal. It, they said back to school may have purple because a lot of kids that are going to college pack their, their stuff in it and they like a nice color and they may have purple, they told me in the fall, they don't know. So they're promotional, they're seasonal colors. So I have now learned that if you see a color you like, grab it. And as of today, this is crazy, I bought four cases of ultramarine. Actually, I bought one for me and Gary told me go back and get him three. It's a deeper, darker blue than this. This is a stadium blue. He wanted something that he can put in his garden that will disappear. 
Yeah, this is the guy that said he will never grow in totes. You know what's going on? He has fig trees in there. Like I have my fig tree and the neighbor's trees and trees from all over. They send their roots into his garden and they rob the soil of nutrients. And the main thing is they rob the soil of water. So you have to water more. But when you have totes set up right, you don't have to water that often. You layer like I layer here. Now this is uh, this is very temporary. I am just putting this here for now. But when I layer, you think about it. The soil is dry. Let's see what's going on. And see, underneath, when you layer, it's damp. So even on the hottest day, if I've got plants growing in here, they can send their roots underneath whatever you're using as layering. And with that, they'll be able to have moisture during the heat of the day of 90 or 100 degrees. You can even use an old tile. You got old tiles, rocks, same thing. By just simply laying a tile or something in your tote. Now, you don't want to cover the whole thing. If I had a zucchini growing here, I'd want to make sure there's plenty of surface space. The plants want air, and so do earthworms, microbes, and everything. You're not sealing it. But throwing a rock in there, a tile in there, I prefer flower pots. That is layering, and that will help you grow better plants. As you can see, this is a real mess, and I happen to love my buckets. Now, why do I love totes? Well, you could go buy a raised bed. I have family members that went and bought a raised bed. $100, about six foot long. It does have legs. It's off the ground. But the point is, if you've got an eight foot, six foot raised bed, you've got to fill the whole bed up with soil. And a bag of soil can cost you anywhere from $10 to $40. Some people told me they were surprised on how much it cost them to fill it up. When I'm working with totes, these are storage containers, I fill them as I need them. So if I want to put a whole line, let's say on the ground here, and yes, of course you can put them on the ground. I've got them on the ground everywhere. Let's take a walk. But if I wanted to line them up like a raised bed, then the thing is, I don't have to work with all of them. I can separate them like I did over there and I have not started to plant. This grows me tons of squash all year. You've seen it last year. I can put them right up against each other or separate them. I can get to them. It's not a big raised bed where I can't reach on the other side and I have to stretch. I'm not that young anymore. I don't want to have to reach four foot across. These are narrow enough that I just walk up and service them. I can sit down on a chair and service them. It works fantastic. I can put them together. I can separate them. I can do what I want. I'm even going to stack some. If you get some really good totes, you can stack them. And I'm going to be stacking totes here because I want to make sure what I'm going to grow on the top totes will get to that rack that Gary hung there that I did not use last year. So you can set up totes any way you want. And you don't like it? You move it! If it's too heavy and your soil's in there and it looks so perfect and you don't want to, you know, empty it, have somebody move it for you. Get a hand truck, move it, drag it, whatever you want. But you can move it. You could use one tote, let's say not to grow in. You could select a tote and say, I'm just going to throw all my kitchen scraps, leaves and everything in there and let it do its thing. And then as I set up some more flower pots, let's say I'm going to set up a flower pot or a bucket to layer. You would go to the tote that you are composting in. Basically, you're taking a tote and you're using it for your own compost. You're making your own compost and you're not setting up something that you're going to have to, you know, turn and, well, at first you'd have to purchase it. Then you've got to crank it and you've got to take care of it. I don't do that. I've got totes that I just throw things in. And as of this morning, I started setting all this up and I just went and picked up some stuff out of some totes that I'm not growing anything in. And I set, I'm starting to set up all of these. So I love my totes just because of that. And I want to share that. And you know what? You can also make a water fountain out of a bucket. And we're going to get into how I made this. This is nothing. This is my little prototype that I came out yesterday and put there. And I thought, wow. And then Gary stepped out here today and said, that's really cool. I said, I know, and it's free. You get these from the nursery. They're free. That I made, and I'll get into how I made that. And there's my water fountain. This isn't even set up yet. I'm shifting things around and moving things around, and the first thing I'm going to do is get everything here all set up.
get this set up and going and then I'm going to come back here and set that up that is very special to me and then I got to set these totes up but see I only have to do one tote or one bucket at a time if it was a full raised bed that was this whole length or if it was a raised bed that long I'd have to do the whole thing you can't water one part where's the water going to go if you only have a little bit of soil on one end it's not like you can plant something on one side and then leave the rest bare, your water will just run and then run into nowhere. That's why I absolutely love totes as raised beds. And going back to Gary, yes, he swore he would never use totes. And now he had me order him this morning of this ultramarine three cases. So the point I'm trying to make is these are fabulous for raised beds. You have full control. You want to start your seeds directly in your totes. You can make a lid. I showed you once I can cut the lid from the tote and put tool on top. And you can protect your seedlings so no birds or anything gets in there. And it kind of is like a greenhouse effect. There is a million and one things you can do with totes. You pick the color you want. Of course, they come in gray if you want something that's going to kind of disappear in your garden. This is going to be really the only garden that's going to be brightly colored. But as the plants grow, and once they're in here, they will fill out and all you'll see is a color peeking through. And it's going to be so nice to be able to sit here, work on my crafts and do what I want and be able to look over and see everything growing. And this is going to be so much fun. And I've got so many ideas and so many different things I'm even going to use behind the chairs. But that's going to be very special if it works out. Just my thought. And I'm going to be doing something back here. Those white chairs are going. So think of how easy it is. I have them up on chairs because we have a lot of squirrels and rabbits. But as you can see, I have a lot on the ground. And that works fantastic too. So either way, but up on a chair, I don't have to bend over. I can sit down on a chair and service it if I want or just simply walk over and take care of whatever I am growing in my containers. There's nothing easier than having it up off the ground. Generally, your totes are a two and a five. These are fives. Some of them have been twos. If they're a really hard plastic and you get them and they have no flex, sometimes they may not last as long. See how these flex? I like the ones that flex. See how they flex? They last pretty much. I'm not, I can't say forever, but I've got some that are over five years old going strong. As long as there's soil in them, you're not going to leave them out in the sunlight without anything in them. You know, if you leave them empty, dry, in a couple years, they'll dry up like your skin and they'll crack. But if you've got soil in them and when you are in the gardening season, you are watering it, it will keep your plastic flexible. And that's what keeps it from cracking. And that is why I really love this. If it's a hard plastic, really hard, you tap on it, it sounds like a hard plastic. I don't even think these buckets are hard plastic. No, they actually flex a little too. You know, a very, very hard plastic, then they can crack after a couple years, two, three years. Let's say it breaks in two years. You're gonna tell me you didn't get your $5 worth because that's basically what they are? So the other thing I wanted to impress on you is if you like a certain color and you go and look online and you find the color like they had fuchsia and then they had ultramarine. Those are promotional colors or seasonal colors. And once they're out, they're out. So if you like it, pick it up. Walmart does carry a lot of colors in their stores, but a lot of stores do. You can check Lowell's, Home Depot, Target, any of your hardware stores. Check for different colors if you're looking for colors. And keep in mind, the color you may see may not be there. They tend to always have black, gray, or Target sells like a beige color, a brown color. Walmart sells a lot of the gray colors. So those are, seem to be around all the time. Christmas time, you may see more green and red. Again, seasonal. But then when you find these odd colors like teal, I may not see them again. Purple, I'm still looking for purple, but I colored my chair purple, I painted it. So just wanted to touch on that. Can you paint totes? You can, but it's, and it's a pain to paint a tote. It's easier to paint the chair. But with the tote, they would have to rough them up a little bit. 
that's all I would say. Or if it's out, it's been outside in the sun, you can paint your tote. I painted that black container, put some red streaks on it. So I kind of wanted to come out here and just touch base as I'm working. Hopefully you'll see me in the next few days and I'll be able to come back and explain to you everything going on. I want to get into this because this is very important to me and probably will be very important to you. And just wanted to remind you that if you see a certain color you like, be it a shocking pink or purple or a teal, and you think you'll come back in the next month or two because you're going to start gardening and buy it then, they may not have it. So you may not be able to get that color. If you like the color, order the color, buy the color. They're not going to go bad. You can store them for years in your house in a box. But we're going to be getting them out. Gary's getting his three cases. Most be here next week of an ultramarine. I bought one case and I'm thinking of doing something on the ground. Not quite had a different idea. Now I kind of, I'm going back and forth between buckets or totes. So we'll see. And that's it. And that is staying. Isn't that cool? I love the colors. That's going to be a bucket garden. And we'll get into what that is going to be. So I hope I answered some of your questions on plastic totes and keep in mind a lot of the raised beds you buy are plastic but this has been working perfect for me and I absolutely love that and I don't have to worry about is my soil good is it bad I've had a lot of people from other countries tell me they couldn't grow in their soil it was toxic there was maybe a house that was sandblasted and there was now lead in the soil and all these issues so they could not grow directly in their soil that safely but they could grow in containers so your containers will not be getting to 150 degrees. Let's put it this way. If the weather turns out to be 150 degrees, then you better get a lot of ice cubes and just lay them on top in your totes so they won't go over 150 degrees. But I've got news for you. The weather's 150 degrees. We got bigger issues than worrying about our plastic totes. Okay, maybe you don't want to try to grow nine full-size papaya plants or trees in a tote. Because let's put it this way, they will escape. That is a root. We actually cut the bottom so the papayas can continue to grow, but they were really pushing on it. That's a lot of trays for one little tote. But then we get a lot of papayas too. So with that, I'm going back to work. I want to get the last five filled and done so I can get planted in these chairs as I work on my wall. And I just wanted to touch base with you on what is coming and talk about the colors of the totes that they have. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.